we've all been there. You just finished eating a big dinner. Maybe it was pasta. Maybe it was a roast. You like lean back in your chair and sigh and say like, I could not eat another bite. I'm stuck. But then someone mentions dessert and suddenly, miraculously, you can eat again, which is weird because biologically speaking, you're full. You just said so yourself. So what is the second wind of hunger? And this is what I'm going to call dessert stomach today. And while you might think it's a problem of willpower, it's actually more to do with your brain's wiring. For a long time, scientists assumed hunger was simple. You ate until your stomach was full and then some internal switch flipped, telling you to stop eating. Simple, it was mechanical, logical, kind of like filling up a gas tank. But we don't just eat for fuel, we also eat for reward. And this new research paper that caught my eye proves that our brain is very, very good at making sure we don't forget that. So while you've probably always assumed that our brain has a way of telling us when to stop eating, that's mostly true because we have a system to detect when we've had enough food. And one major player in that system is in the hypothalamus. It's called the POMC neuron. Now these neurons, they usually act like breaks. They slow down your eating after a meal by releasing a molecule that signals satiety. Basically, they're saying like, we're good, we're done here. Here's the twist and exactly what I discovered reading the paper I mentioned. Those same neurons do the exact opposite as well. The POMC neurons also release a second chemical, a second molecule, which is a natural opioid called beta endorphins. This is sort of your brain's feel good chemical. And when beta endorphins are released, it switches on like a dessert switch. Basically, your brain gets this jolt of pleasure by thinking about sugar or anticipating a sugary dessert. Which means right after eating a meal, the POMC neurons are one, telling your body, hey, you're full, stop eating. But behind the scenes, they are also activating the sugar seeking mode. Crazy, right? I mean, the same part of your brain that is telling you no more food is also secretly whispering in your ear like, unless it's cake, unless it's your favorite Oreo tort your mom has made since you were a kid, then let's absolutely devour it. Side note here, if you've never heard of opioids in foods before, you have to check out a recent video I did on why cheese is so hard to stop eating. Here's where it gets even cooler. So the researchers saw that these beta endorphins target a specific part of your brain called the paraventricular thalamus or PVT. The PVT helps manage motivation. So when it's activated by these opioid signals, your brain sort of driving you to get that sweet reward, even if you're physically full. In experiments with mice, when scientists blocked this signal, the mice didn't go for that sugary dessert, especially after eating a full meal, which means it's not about the taste of sugar. It's about the specific brain circuit being switched on. This might seem like a cruel trick, but from an evolutionary perspective, it makes a lot of sense because thousands of years ago, our ancestors didn't have access to sugar all the time. It was pretty rare if they found sugary foods, maybe like some honey or berries. So it was a big advantage to eat that food as much and as quickly as you could because sugar is such a rapid source of energy in a world where food was not really guaranteed. Which means historically having a dessert stomach was actually a survival tool. But today, sugar is everywhere. You know, it's like five steps in my kitchen. It's in nearly every processed food you would buy. You know, it's not like I'm gonna like go outside and forage for sugar. And that's where things get tricky because our brain hasn't caught up to modern life. 
it is still wired to crave sugar as if we live in prehistoric times. I know it's easy to think of eating as this like simple transaction, right? It's like calories in, energies out. But we know that's not the full story. So the next time you're like busting at the waist, thinking like, I'm so full, but maybe a couple bites of cake, I want you to remember your dessert stomach isn't a weakness. It's this finely tuned ancient brain circuit that's doing exactly what it was evolved to do.